Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, North Flight Images, and in this video I'm going to look at what are potentially two of the biggest blunders made by often new photographers, professional photographers, people looking to create, develop a business in photography, whether that be any field, whether it's commercial, like I do, I do commercial photography, architectural photography, wedding photography, anything. The key is always to know your market and understand your market. But in general, regarding pricing, it is a big mistake to go for cheapness, usually. I mean, there are always exceptions to all of these things, and I'm sure people in comments uh, to the video, which I do appreciate, will point out aspects where this is not necessarily true. But in general, offering an initial discount uh, to clients in the assumption you're going to get follow-up work is not that good an idea, because the initial discount may get you the work and you've won a job on price. But the pro thing is that people who are clients who are particularly interested in the price of the job are not necessarily that interested in the quality of the work or anything else you might contribute. They don't care how much effort you put in or anything like that. If you win a job on price, you can lose jobs on price. And typically they are the sorts of clients that are not going to bode well for the ongoing development of your business. Now you might decide a one-off job, you want to get that, you don't mind, it's relatively easy to do. You think, well, I'll give a discount. That's great, it's got you some work, got you some money, that's, that's good. What happens though, if that client then comes back to you and says, well, actually we quite like that, we'd like you to do some more. However, they expect you to do it at the price you charged the first time. What you saw as a discount to them, they saw as the price. So you withdrawing the discount, or even having a lesser discount when they come back to you, is seen as a price hike. From their point of view, you're charging more. And if they're somebody who hired you on the fact that they got you cheap, well, there you go. They're going to go, OK, and then maybe going to look for somewhere else because there's always a supply of people who do stuff on the cheap. Now, are they the kind of clients that you really want for any long term development, long term relationship? I'm going to say no. Um, this means don't lowball your prices. Don't go cheap just to get work. Um, if you're looking to develop a business. And the idea is if you're in this job, you're looking to develop a business. You're looking for long-term business. You're looking for clients that will come back to you, clients you work with, clients you know. Um, that's not always possible. Sometimes you get clients only sort of for two or three jobs and then they move on and do something else. Well, that, that happens. But that's still not a point of low-balling your first, first prices. It rarely works well in the long run. Now, the second big issue, and this comes down to the fact that when you think about it, when you look at your business, you do not want every single one of your clients, probably. Now, it's nice you might want them all from the fact that you get money from them, but you don't necessarily like working with some of them. Some of them are more difficult. Some of them are nice to work with. Some of them it's helpful. They, you know, they give you briefs. They do all the stuff like that that helps gets the work done because it's a bit of a partnership, and that comes down that. This comes down to the second of the big blunders. It is a reluctance to increase your prices. Now, this could be just because you think, well, I'm not really charging enough for what I'm doing here. I've looked at what other photographers charge. I think I should be charging more. That's fair enough. It might also be that your costs have gone up considerably. Now. How do you pass those costs? Can you raise your prices? A lot of people have this fear of raising prices and think, oh, if I raise the prices, nobody will want to work with me. Well, interestingly enough, and this is an example I learned many years ago, um, double your prices. Now, if you double your prices, what does that mean? Well, you're going to lose some customers. Let's say you double your prices and you lose 50% of your uh, lose 50% of your clients. The clients that are going to be left are the ones that are happy paying it because they value you, they see the value in what you're doing. They're going to probably be the easier ones to work with. The ones you lose, the 50% you lose, 
even if you lose 50%, you've doubled your prices, so you're getting the same amount back, you're getting the same income. So there's no real problem there. And those ones you lose are the ones of the, you get them on price, you lose them on price. Yeah, does it really matter? Um, you don't have to hold on to every single client as if you know your entire business depended on not losing a single client. People move around. You get people at the, say, I'm a commercial photographer, so I deal with companies. You get people at the companies move on. So a person you have developed a relationship with is promoted, leaves a job, goes elsewhere, something like that. Someone new comes in. Quite often it's somebody relatively junior and one of their ways of making their mark is to be able to try and beat you down on price or find a better, a different supplier. You know, um, I'm newly promoted to this job. I need to do something. Getting rid of this photographer is something. We'll get rid of this photographer. You know, it's action. Seen to be doing something. Big problem with business, you know, um, certainly here in the UK, is that an awful lot of effort that goes on business seems to be concentrated on being seen to do something, not necessarily achieving anything. But that's, that's another matter altogether. I, I just see this from the angle of someone who works with businesses when people change jobs and things like that. I mentioned if you lose 50% of your clients. What about you double your prices and you lose 20% of your clients? Well, your quid's in. Um, you've got less work, you've got less work with the 50%, so you've got more time to spend developing your business, refining your skills. Now, I'm lucky in that many of these tests and things I do here are related, some tangentially, some directly, to my commercial work that I do. So I've got a continuous training program. I'm learning new skills all the time in the guise of doing these various testing cameras, lenses and things I do. It's part of the business. When I set the business up was to give myself enough time. If you're finding you've not got enough time, raise your prices. This is assuming you've got enough work and you'll lose some clients. Well, you've got extra time. The remaining clients are paying you more money, so that shouldn't be a problem. So look on it as those clients at the low end of your business. The ones that when they phone up and say, oh, we'd like you to do some photo, you think, oh, do I really want to do this? Well, charge them more. If they pay the extra, well, you go along and you've made some more money and helps you get over doing a job that you're perhaps not so keen on. If they go elsewhere, there you go. What's, yeah, what's the problem? Now, that's rather blunt by saying that these are just the two big problems, but they, I see it over and over again. It is not a, an unrealistic approach to your initial pricing and then subsequent pricing and an unrealistic approach to raising prices. There is nothing wrong with raising prices if you do it carefully. In fact, if you do it very carefully, you can move your business into a higher end. Money. And it, it's one way of doing it. Um, Every situation will be different, but just make sure you're being serious, you're thinking things through, you're actually looking at the consequences. And that comes down to actually running your business as a photographer, as a proper business. Uh, and I still come across photographers, you know, professional photographers, who I think, well, they're doing it a bit of a hobby. So this is the full-time job, but they're still doing it as a bit of a hobby. Now, I've been accused of that myself because of all the other stuff I do, but this has always been part of my commercial business, is understanding various kit like this, how to get the best out of it. It's why companies come to me and ask me to do things like this, specialist macro photography. Um, it's because I've had the chance to experiment and learn how to do things. And a part of that comes not accepting every single job that comes along. There's nothing wrong in saying, no thanks, we're not available for that. There you go. I hope that's of some help. I've got lots more videos that look at articles as well that look at aspects of you know, business of side of photography, whether it's selling prints, whether it's all kinds of aspects, promotional marketing and things like that. There is now a, a full index of all my videos because YouTube's not very good at it. And I'll put a link in the notes to this if you're interested. Um, it's over 450 so far and growing at quite a rate. So um, there may well be other stuff of interest in there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, much appreciated and uh, thank you.